Hello, 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 as Charlie Chaplin would say in many of his brilliant silent movies. So what are we going to do today? Well, I think today is Play Like Morphe Day. It's the National Play Like Morphe Day. Now, you have so many stupid days going on. You have even Kick a Ginger Day. I don't know who invented that, but I want to give him a damn good kick. You have, I don't know, so many silly days, but today is Play Like Morphe Day. So the aim of this quick video is to play maybe two games, just two games, and I'm going to play like Morphe. So every move, I'm going to ask myself, what would Morphe do here? Even if I lose, even if I get stuffed horribly, this is the aim of the two videos. So what would Morphe do here? This is what we've got to keep asking ourselves. And of course, I'm talking about the great and brilliant, let me just bring him up here, Paul Morphe. And you can Google him yourself, of course, but Paul Morphe was a legend of chess. And we just bring up a picture of the legend here. Um, and we get rid of the Wikipedia donation thing. I uh, hope you've all donated to them. I certainly haven't. Um, okay, well, there is the great Paul Morphy, the legend of American chess. And he looks like a young man there, doesn't he? But we're going to try to play like this gentleman. I haven't quite done my hair the same as him today. I've done my normal kind of look. But the question is, what would Morphy do? So what would Morphy do in the opening? Well, Morphe would play in a romantic fashion. He would, oh, I'm getting morphe by Morphe. Oh, my Lord, you can't do this to me. I'm getting morphified. I'm supposed to be the one sacrificing, not you. Um, okay, well, Captain Amulo is playing like Morphe. Okay, so what would Morphe do here? Morphe would counterattack in the centre with d5. And now what would Morphe do? Morphe would give up the pawn on d5 and try to develop with speed. So that is precisely what we're going to do here. What would Morphe do here? He would develop and not worry about it. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to play some moves in between. So I have no idea at all what this opening is about. Morphe would not swap queens off. That just looks really, really not good. Not happy. Now, okay, so what's happening here? What would Morphe do? Morphe would be... Okay, Morphe would just have to play a move like this. By the way, I might not be trying this challenge again in a hurry. <laughs> this is this uh, kind of seems like a bit of a, a bit of a tough challenge I've got myself into here. Um, okay, so um, even even the great Morphe has to go backwards occasionally. Sometimes you have to go backwards to come forwards. And I'm 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 I, who's supposed to be Morphe here? Look, I'm supposed to be Morphe, not my opponent. My opponent is. Uh, well, he's morphine me, isn't he? Um, okay, right. So I have sacrificed, lost, a pawn here for absolutely zero compensation. Maybe like the great Morphe as well. And um, the position is not looking so great. I have two bishops. So if in the days of these coffeehouse chess players, it'd be right, well, you know, have a pawn, have a, have a piece head start. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me because I am... The great ambitious Morphe, who doesn't like endings and has somehow got himself into a bit of a cabuggle ending here. Okay, sod Morphe, sod Morphe. This is horrible. I'm gonna right. The next challenge will be to play like a normal chess player. There is only one Morphe, as I think we've um, seen in this game, and that one Morphe is not is not me. Clearly, I can't do a Morphe. I'm not going to try it again. Two pawns down. Right, now it's swindle mode. Um, swindle mode it is. Forget Morphe. I'm going to play like a street hustler from the streets of New York. Okay, so I've got to move quick. And I'm two pawns down in an ending. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. It's something we can have. Okay, right. So we're going to have to, we're going to, have to just punts now punt some miracle like moves and this is a very disgusting position and i don't see any compensation at all for my two pawns especially as a pair of rooks are going to get exchanged um, and i'm down on time maybe the next game will be more of a success it's much easier to play like morphe when you are um white playing like morphe when you're black is is a lot harder because when you're white we can try king's gambit 
we can try oh come on come on morphe would not be happy about this okay so this is well just an absolutely disgusting ending my only chance is to come and try to uh take some pawns with my king and pray uh that i'm not going to be 20 tempo behind which i kind of had the feeling these extra 20 tempo that my opponent has and 20 pawns is um, going to be enough. I might have to throw this one away. Is it even worth analysing this one? Uh, well, I, I'm not convinced. Let's put it that way. Um, uh, okay, so what do we do here? Okay, well, we take this. And now we have to take this. And we are going to get stuffed. But let's just play on a couple of moves. And just see if he can put me in my place, which of course he should be able to here. All you need to do in this position is just keep checking, bring your king in. You probably win the f5 pawn with check, and then you win the game. So we'll just make sure he he knows his technique here, and then we we'll give it one more one more crack of the whip. We'll analyze the next game. This is I'm going to call this one a warm up game, a warm up game. Yeah. So here he comes. He just needs to come around like this. Check me. Check me. Check me and that's all he needs to do so uh not much more than that uh he takes the pawn now and i resign if he takes my pawn i resign okay well that's just as good okay so that was my warm-up game um let's see if he wants another game okay so now we're going to try to play a little bit better in this one i'm just going to play two games because i've actually got well morphe would play b4 wouldn't he or d4 let's go for a moro gambit come on Mora Gambit it, just like the great... Oh, come on! We don't like this kind of boring D3 move. Not accepting my Gambit. That's no fun. Okay, so now I'm going to play like a Dutch defence. Try to get my Queen to H4 and go F5. Now that move stops it, so I'm going to play this move E5 instead. And I'm now going to try to put a piece on the D4 square. Get some control of that square. I don't want to swap bishops off. I quite like my bishop, actually. Um, and instead, I'm going to get myself in a lot of trouble with a knight coming here. But we don't worry about such things. Morphe would just sacrifice on f2. We're not going to worry about this. You can have that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You do that. If it makes you happy, it makes you happy. I'm going to now try, attempt, to somehow trap his queen. This is the idea. I have no idea how exactly I'm going to do that. How do we do that now here, boys and girls? How do we attempt to trap his queen, which has no squares at the moment? Is there any way we can do that? Well, it's a funny position, isn't it? His queen has no squares, but I can't get a rook to f1 to trap it. And I'm not sure what I actually play here in order to... Oh God, I'm certainly not. I'm not, a, I'm not a great fan of Morphe. I used to love Morphe until I tried to play like him. I don't think that's more my fault than Morphe's fault. Let's 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 be honest about things. Okay, well I'm going to have to go here and I don't know, um, try to chase his queen around somehow. But even here, he just goes to e4, um, and that's not going to be good enough. Queen e4, and I can't do much in that position. Looks horrible for me. Exchange down. What a disappointing day of blitz. I'll be back. Don't worry. Some better blitz. Um, and, well, okay. I mean, do we... Well, I mean, he's going to go to e4 eventually, of course. It'd be silly not to go queen e4. I don't know why he's even thinking about any other options in this position. Queen e3, bishop d2, queen e4. Why doesn't he want to play that? I don't understand. He's just winning. Um... Surely he's offered a draw. Well, okay, if you really want. Uh, that was just pathetic. Why didn't you go? Why didn't you go Queen E4 to E E3 to E4 there? Okay, one last game, and I'm just going to try to see if we can do one game. No more Morphe. I'm going to play like Williams now, and Williams plays his H pawn, Harry, and he tries to checkmate. So that is precisely what I'm going to do. I kind of think that's what Morphe tries to do in his games as well but i'm going to do it now in a sensible way no crazy gambits just going to bring my pieces out to decent squares eventually try to get a knight maybe i like this f3 square this is a square i want to get my pieces to f3 now okay um i'm gonna go i'm just gonna keep on coming here 
he's gone f3 himself okay we come back normally in these positions i try to go d4 so he's allowed me to to play this here anyway and um this resembles the king's indian defense so how do we get an attack going here well f5 would be the natural way my knight here is very badly placed. I don't like my knight. My knight was uh, very badly placed on d7. So this is why I'm maneuvering it around to a better position, which is indeed the c6 square, where it doesn't combogulate my other pieces. So that's what the maneuver I was trying to put into action here. And um, now, do we ever take this one or do we just... We don't need to release the tension so soon, do we? We can just play in a more positional manner here. Um, and okay, I, I quite like my grip on the G4 square, but it's only a, a normal position. Nothing too much going on. Now, let's put a knight on that square. A knight would be much better placed than my bishop. So, especially now I'm going to move a knight there with check. So my knight will come to G4 with check. We might analyse this game afterwards. It's always more fun analysing the wins. <laughs> a bit unfair in my opponent, but you know, uh, hey-ho, they're my videos. I can do what I damn well want. And um, if I do win and don't blunder pawns like an idiot. And, uh, well, okay. It's only, a, it's only a pawn. We don't worry about such things in life. And, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, oh, what the hell was that move? My knights are looking so beautiful. I really don't think we have to. I'm just going to, come on. Oh, this is more Morphe-like. Just going to try to blow him, blow him open. Blow him open. So this is this is what, this is what Morphe, Morphe would approve. Look at my knights. They're, they're raping his position. In, I don't know if that's a good terminology, but um, you, you kind of get what I mean. So he sacrificed one to try to get rid of my knights. And uh, now I can do something clever here, surely, but I don't know what, so I'm just going to check. And now, um, if his bishop wasn't there, I'd have a monstrous bishop here move. And he's going to go rook here next move. So where is where is the correct move to play? Where is it? Where is it? Well, let, let's just move the queen back here so I've got bishop c6. Because he's going to go rook g1 anyway. So um, I want to at least... Uh, he's trying to get rid of my rapey knight there. Um... And I'm obviously going to try to keep that piece on the board, aren't I? I mean, even a move like Rook here is incredibly strong. But let, 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 if in doubt, play some Patsy checks. That's that's a, a that's the lesson for the day. And um, while his pieces are discoordinated, I'm going to try to get my knight into his position. And okay, that didn't quite work. Knight check, King there. I don't see a clear continuation. So we are now going to... Oh, if I go there, he has queen there, which is quite annoying. Oh, this is a bit of a pain, isn't it? Um, uh, okay, well, I'm going to have to go here and try to bring my rook to this square. Not a great way to play this position, and I'm very slow as well. King g1. I have to then swap off my knight. Um, and my knight is actually... Yeah, it's not so great at all. So, okay. Uh, let's see. I've thrown this one as well as well. Not a good day at the office today. Oh well, these days happen. They happen. They just seem to happen quite a lot for me at the moment. Um, okay. Well, I'll keep punting a little bit because his king is fractionally weak. So we can try. We can try to play play on a little bit here against his slightly weakened king, but um, it doesn't look like it's working particularly for me. A lot of my ideas. Um, maybe just what would I play here? Maybe just rookie four if I was white. Rookie four, and do I have really have enough checks? Rookie four seems to cover everything. Don't see what I do against that. Well, against that, I mate you now, Sunny Jim, or I win your rook and your queen. Okay, well that was uh, that was a rubbish game. Let's be honest. Okay, look. I think I'll leave it there for the day. We're, let's have a quick look at that game, shall we? I should have been crushing him at some stage. Um, oh, let's flip the board back. Um, let's just jump to around where I got my knight to g4, around this position. So it's all about this g4 square. As long as I can situate a knight on that square, I should be reasonably happy. 
And when I get a knight there, I get one knight on e3, one knight on g4. And that is very pleasant. This position, even though I lose a pawn, pawn's not so important. I mean, okay, if I'd actually seen that he could have won a pawn there, I'd have probably played g6 first. There's no point giving away pawns for the sake of it. But anyway, after this, now Freddy, our good friend Freddy, does a really good roll, like a, a crowbar. It crowbars the position open here. So um, in order to use my two knights, and this is a good tip when you're attacking, if you have good attacking pieces and your opponent's king is slightly weak, which I believe it is here because my pieces are very close to it and it hasn't got much protection, you need to look for crowbar pawn breaks to open up the position and get into the king. So this idea, I don't know why he grabbed this pawn, it looks very dodgy. This idea of crowbarring with f4 must be extremely strong because now I get rid of two more defensive pieces and for the exchange, that doesn't matter. When you're attacking a little key, three pieces is the golden number. When attacking, I have three pieces attacking here. My main threat is queen g3, which will lead to mate. Uh, for example, if he played, let's say, bishop e4, queen g3 check. If he goes to f1, there has to be a check mate there somewhere. Oh, yeah, there's a nice one. I go knight to, oh, you can't go to f1, I have a knight there. Oh, my God. If he goes to this square, I was thinking knight to f2, and I, I win at least a queen. So that is why here he played a good move. He gave up the rook. Now, maybe pawn takes, but I didn't want to release his bishop, and I thought my knight stops his queen coming here. Now, maybe I missed a very strong idea around this point. Um, of course, I could take the queens and take on c2, but his king is exposed, so exchanging queens seems illogical um, in this position. What I probably should do here, it was kind of a case of perhaps Patsa sees a check here. A much better move would have been something like queen f6, because now he can't do the same. He can't go bishop c1 because of the mate, and I want to go rook f8. I'm controlling the f1 square. And I also want to get rid of quite a decent defender of his, the bishop, by playing bishop to c6 next. So this move, I think, must leave him in dire, dire straits. So don't always go for the check if it doesn't achieve anything. And this is the case here. It doesn't achieve much. And, well, here I decided to swap off light square bishops, which I was able to do. And maybe now again I played a bad move. I mean, logically thinking... When you're attacking, I have two active pieces, my knight and my queen. Looking at this position again, I can see immediately that the correct way to play this would be to bring the third attacking unit into the game. So something like rook d6 makes sense to try to bring the rook over to g6. Let's say he takes on e3, I recapture. There's a major threat of rook g6 check, meaning he can't try to get his rook in the game because rook g6 would lead to checkmate. And if he tries to block my rook coming in, well, my rook can now probably come in another way. I could eventually get it to this square, and this is going to be winning. Um, I mean, it should, should be easily winning somehow, this kind of position. Um, and then, okay, the rest of the game, not so important, because, to be honest, it was a load of rubbish. Okay, well, there you go. That is my play like Morphe Day. Um, tell me who you'd like me to try to play like next, because I have to say that was a terrible appalling job a player like Morphe. Now if you get this video briefly I'm going to be playing for the rest of the day um, an odds match against Komodo on chess.com slash tv. So if you tune in to www.chess.com slash tv um, you'll be able to see me take on Komodo. I played it yesterday and I got to the score of one and a half out of two. It's odds match so I start with more material than computer. There's money on the match so quite a stressful thing, but I'm going to give it a go later on, see how I get on. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. A little bit of random chaos today, nothing too serious. I prefer chaos like this, to be honest. And um, I'll be back with more crap at another time. Cheers. Thanks for all likes. Thanks for all subscribes. Check out my website, gingergm.com. If you want to support me for Christmas, buy it a day by day. I mean, that will be like my little Christmas gift. Cheers. Thank you. Goodbye.